About a month and a half ago, I made a video covering the last 5,000 years of Indian history, attempting to accurately condense many thousands of years into a few minutes as well I could, to give a rudimentary overview of India's rich history for one interested in the subject and wishing to get a broad overview of the timeline. There was an avalanche of comments from one particular part of the video after it was uploaded that I did not expect to be the focus of such an intense debate. I'm of course referring to Aryan Migration or Invasion Theory. I'll show you the portion of the video that was the focus of these fine people's um, derision and disdain. Then I'll go over why I presented the material in that fashion and what I would change if I were to make an updated version of the video and what are the different views on this controversial topic and why it is controversial. Around 1500 BC, a series of unfortunate events began that would doom this civilization. First, the climate. Many of the tributaries of the Indus River, which their cities depended on, drastically changed course, flooding some cities and turning others into derelict husks that slowly were covered by the sands of time. And if surviving the weather was not enough, then came the Aryans. They too had suffered from climactic change. Their river valley homes around what is today Turkmenistan had dried up and they were seeking greener pastures for their large herds of cattle and horses. They were among the first to domesticate the horse and use the increased mobility to transplant their people onto the Iranian plateau. And then they crossed the Suleiman and Hindu Kush mountain ranges into the Indus Valley. There, the vestiges of the already decimated Indus Valley civilization were wiped from all human knowledge or recollection until their remains were excavated in the early 20th century. The Aryans founded several kingdoms along the Ganges River. We know their names in mythological histories because their epics and language have survived till today and is the basis for many of today's Indian languages. Throughout the period known as the Vedic Age, these Aryan kingdoms would constantly wage war on each other. First off, I should have mentioned that the entry of the Aryans into the Indian subcontinent is a theory. The reason I chose not to is because the textbooks, historical overviews, and documentaries I based my video on all reiterated the same thing. A group called the Aryans existed and moved into the Indian subcontinent sometime around 1500 BC. Correct or not, it still seems to be the predominant version of history thought in the United States and much of the Western world. When I went to high school and then university in California, that was the narrative my textbooks taught. Interestingly, I have found that there was a lawsuit and subsequent out-of-court settlement unfolding over the last several years in California where an agreement was reached to modify several California textbooks changing Aryan invasion to Aryan migration theory. Then, Governor Jerry Brown vetoed the changing of the textbooks because of expense reasons. So maybe you're asking yourself, why is Aryan migration theory so controversial? The answer begins with the British. During the period of their influence over India, they used the theories of Max Mueller, among others, whose interpretations of the Rig Veda and other ancient writings hypothesized that the chariot warlord authors were invaders from the north. The British unscrupulously amplified these theories in India. The narrative they wished to promulgate was that the Indian subcontinent had always been dominated by the more quote-unquote civilized influences of the North and that they always had been dominated by the lightest and most foreign. Hey, just like the British. This is definitely an example of wrong and harmful pseudoscience. And then, as if the situation could not get more toxic, a popular, at the time, racist occultist, Madame Lebowski, said, Hey, the Germans are descended from these same Aryans. And then, <laughs> German occultists, including Hitler, with essentially no proof whatsoever, said, Yeah, we're related to that lot. So, this makes for a very toxic situation. Unfortunately, there are those that believe the Nordic-esque master race was romping about in ancient India. Understandably, there are those that recoil from hearing such unsubstantiated nonsense and run in the opposite direction, sometimes too far in my opinion. 
Some purport that India has remained genetically and racially the same pretty much since before recorded history. We were not influenced by pretty much anybody, and Aryan migration, zero proof. Just a bunch of racist British out to destroy us. There is truth to that. But again, it's taken too far. I believe that it can conclusively be proven that people migrate and move around a lot. The Spanish are an admixture of Iberians, Phoenicians, Carthaginians, Greeks, Celts, Romans, Vandals, Visigoths, Arabs, Berbers, and more. While the Russians are an admixture of Slav, Nord, Mongol, and hundreds of other prehistoric tribes and other peoples. The fact is that all people are a mixture of many different prehistoric people and tribes. And to think that one is not related to one's immediate neighbors is ridiculous. They may not have been called Aryans, but one of the most concrete pieces of evidence that a peoples invaded or migrated into the Indian subcontinent at this time, 1500 BC, in my opinion, is that the horse and chariot so far seems to have zero archaeological basis in the Indus Valley or Sarasvati civilizations, and that approximately around 1500 BC, the collapse of the civilizations in the Indus Valley Horses and chariots appear in India afterwards, and I don't think it is a wild stretch of the imagination, but I don't think that these horses migrated by themselves. Contemporary parallels can be found with the Mitanni Empire in the Middle East, the Hittites in Anatolia, and the Hyksos invasion of Egypt. All of these areas had horse and chariot introduced by foreign invaders. All around are slightly before 1500 BC. Before making my video, I saw two of Dr. David Foley's videos, who is the founder of the American Institute of Vedic Studies. They are very good and I recommend you watch them, and I'll put the links down in the description. He is adamantly against the Aryan migration or invasion theory. He makes some very good arguments against it, based on his vast knowledge of the Rig Veda and linguistics. However, I think he extrapolates his findings to a degree that he takes too far. Here is an example. Saraswati was a great river from the ocean to the sea more than 5,000 years ago, which is how it is portrayed in the ancient texts like the Rig Veda. It dried up around 4,000 years ago, which is how we find it mentioned in the later Vedic literature, even in the Mahabharata. So clearly, the Vedic people were on that river and knew about it through its different stages and had been in India then for more than 5,000 years. So the idea that they came to India in this so-called Aryan invasion or migration of 1500 BC is totally refuted by their knowledge of the river system. So I think it is best to refute this poor logic with a historical example. The ancient Mycenaean civilization inhabited modern day Greece. They were the people that fought the Trojan War. Their civilization collapsed, and in moved the Dorians, and other separate ethnic invaders, into Greece. After a dark age, they wrote down the oral tradition about the Trojan War that predated their invasion of Greece. In the 19th century, Heinrich Schliemann was able to find the lost cities of Troy, Mycenae, and Tyrans. Does this mean that the Dorians were the exact same peoples as the Mycenaeans? Of course it doesn't. They intermingled with and absorbed the pre-existing civilization that was there. The Mycenaeans wrote in a script called Linear B, and the ancient Greeks wrote in Classical Greek. Just as in ancient India had a different script for the Sarasvati in this valley civilization, and then after 1500 BC there was a different script. And also, um, in the comments, if there's a, I, I have looked for one, I haven't seen an explanation. If this is a continuous people, why is there the change in scripts? One of the sources I heavily relied on for my earlier video was the British historian Michael Wood, which is perhaps why I got a handful of comments accusing me of being a British agent, spreading Britannic propaganda. I was curious after receiving my feedback to see if he had received similar feedback for his work. And I found some feedback he responded to that was very pertinent to this subject on a public broadcasting system forum. The comment that he responded to stated, Although Aryan invasion theory has been repeatedly debunked through overwhelming archaeological, scientific, mathematical, 
geographical evidence, supporters of the theory for racial and political reasons continue to promote this false teaching. Many Western scholars, as well as U.S. Department of Education, promote it through textbooks. It is shameful and despicable act of racist behavior against Hindus. Please try to include or do a separate series in which all the facts can be presented and show how the Aryan invasion is nothing more but a myth that promotes injustice to India and its history. Western scholars continue to make the claim that Sanskrit is the language of white people and white Aryans, wrote the Vedas. These are lies and must be erased. It is painful to Hindus like myself to see how my ancestors are being undermined. They should be praised for their contribution to civilization and be misrepresented through the Aryan invasion lie. If you believe in decency of promoting truth through your journalism, please take this issue to heart. Many Hindus and Western scholars can show you the evidence to prove that Aryan invasion is a deliberate lie. I can give you many names. Please help me. I believe that my people have been harmed greatly through this injustice. Michael Wood responded, Thanks, Kamala, for your very thoughtful and obviously deeply heartfelt letter. I'm going to put up a long answer on this, explaining the reasoning behind following one argument rather than another. As many people have written on this issue, and it obviously matters to lots of Indians, whether in India or living abroad. Some of you know that the Aryan question was recently at issue at the court case involving California Board of Education regarding the teaching of Indian history in schools. As I hope you must surely have realized, our series was not made to support shameful or despicable racist behavior or ideas or to vandalize Indian history, but made with honest intent, sound research, and above all, with great affection for Indian culture. The question is of course very complex and hotly argued over, and there is no question that the Aryan theory in the 19th century was the subject of many racial interpretations. In Europe, where there was fundamental antipathy to Hindu culture among many in the colonial class. But I think over this, big misconceptions have crept in, along with a lot of pseudoscience. The issue, it seems to me, is not in the end one of archaeological, mathematical, geographical, or genetic, or even, some, as some claim, astronomical science. Though sure, some of these may well be able to help resolve it in time, nor Empathetically, it is one of skin color, as you suggest. The issue is, sim is simply one of linguistics. As Professor Pichapan, one of India's and the world's leading geneticists, says in our first episode, you must never confuse ethnicity with language. Genetics can tell us the DNA of India has remained remarkably constant for 10,000 years, save for relatively small influxes from the northwest and northeast. But that does not tell us about language. Example, search India's DNA for the British, and where would you find them despite widespread of their speech? I think you have overstated the cause when you say that the Aryan migration theory has been debunked. Not invasion, by the way. I never use that term. In fact, as far as I can tell, the majority of language scholars in the world still believe that the ancestral language of Sanskrit cannot have been born inside the subcontinent. But must have come from outside. Many eminent Sanskritologists believe that this is plainly revealed in the earliest layers of the text of the Rig Veda, both in its content and in linguistic borrowings from Dravidian and Central Asian language connections. Recent work on time-death linguistics, which tries to reconstruct the branches off the main trunk of a language, fa a family tree's judged by language change, has reconstructed the Indo-European family tree in some detail, earliest recorded being Hittite. In the eyes of most experts, the language moved southwards and eastwards into Iran and northwest India. In our films, we said there was controversial, but it remains the most plausible hypothesis and is backed up by the totality of the evidence. And for the dating, we'll speak more on this, but clearly the earliest Rig Veda hymns have to be in the second millennium BC. To take only one fact, horse-drawn chariots have been after the invention of the chariot and the arrival of the horse in the subcontinent. But thanks 
very much indeed for your mail. I know many of you disagree strongly with this, and over the next weeks we'll no doubt we'll all correspond more on it. So in the end I believe it was most likely that there were some people, whatever they were called, who migrated into India and brought chariots, combined their language, and created a new native Indian language called Sanskrit. And no, they weren't Nordic blondes, but they probably looked much like the northern Indians of today. After looking at the known evidence and different opinions, I don't believe there was a massive invasion or migration of Aryans into the Indian subcontinent, but I think it's more likely a few small-scale migrating tribes came across in waves over the centuries and merged in with the descendants of the collapsed Indus Valley Sarasvati civilizations. A similar example in history could be the Celtic invasion of Ireland, which was once widely believed to have taken place. And now it seems to be that there's a historical consensus that the Hallstatt Celts, the progenitor Celts, never actually went and spread and um, propagated and went and invaded Ireland. That it was merely a cultural transference. And maybe there was a few of the actual original Celts who went and moved into Ireland, but it was widely a, not a genetic thing or a migration thing, but it was just maybe a very smooth, few small people that made contact, but their culture made a big impact on their culture and language and everything that goes with that. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Did the Aryan invasion of India actually take place? Is it complete bullcrap or is there any substance to it? Um, if you're in the camp that you think it did not happen, um, I would be very interested to read anything on explaining how the chariots got to India or why is the radical change from the Indus Valley script to the Sanskrit written script. And let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get updates every time I make a new video. And if you really like the video and would like to help me make more content like this, go head over to Patreon and starting just $1 a month, you can help support this channel like these wonderful people.